Hey, music junkies. Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. If you dig music, you're going to want to subscribe below to this channel so you don't miss out on an episode. It's we're now daily. Now, today we present another episode of our show, Vox, where, of course, we celebrate a great vocalist from the rock era. Someone who has ignited our hearts, enlightened our souls, and blown our minds with their incredible instrument through the power and the passion of their interpretation. We turn the spotlight on a vocalist, or really an incredible artist that deserves special recognition for their underappreciated and sometimes overlooked brilliance. In this episode, we honor the indispensable Kate Bush. Now, the word genius gets thrown around rather recklessly and undeservedly in this time. In my opinion, there are only a few true geniuses in the music world. And to be labeled a genius, you really need to be able to do virtually everything. Sing, perform, compose, produce at a high level with equal transcendence. If you add tabs or descriptive words to define Kate Bush, genius would be one of those words. I really believe she's earned that exalted designation. I mean, Kate Bush's vocal innovation is astonishing. Every song she's ever recorded has a distinct originality. Not one of her singles, or album cuts for that matter, sounds the same. Even though you recognize Kate's unmistakable voice, she mixes up her tone, her style, her cadence, and her inflection with shifting range, resonance, and emotion. Kate grew up in the English farming community of East Wickham. Her unique sounding voice gained notoriety when she was a young girl while training at her older brother's karate dojo in the village of Welling. Her ki eye had such a high-pitched squeak that the karate group gave Kate the nickname Ee. That squeak evolved to Ee becoming the high priestess of ethereal shrills and unorthodox swooping that enthralls you like a blustering auditory thunderstorm. Kate's powerful vocal style has heavily influenced contemporaries like Tori Amos, St. Vincent, Bjork, and Mitski, among many others. Kate Bush is also a performance art pioneer with her outlandish costumes, bizarre dance choreography, and theatrical mime. I mean, look at video footage of Kate Bush's live performances going all the way back to the late 70s and compare them to the onstage pageantry of pop superstars like Beyonce, Lady Gaga, Katy Perry, Billie Eilish, and tell me that Kate didn't help blaze that trail. Having said that, here is my Kate Bush fiver with two honorable mentions. The first honorable mention is the duet, Don't Give Up, with Peter Gabriel from his So album. A perfect matchup of revolutionary artists. And of course, we're going to cover this in detail in the near future under our new show, Dose, that celebrates the greatest duets of the rock era. So that'll be coming up. I also want to recognize the heart-wrenching song, This Woman's Work, which was written for the John Hughes film, She's Having a Baby. It was used in the emotional climax when Kevin Bacon's character, Jake, learns that the lives of his wife, played by Elizabeth McGovern, and their unborn child are in danger. Apparently, Kate Bush wrote the song specifically for the sequence in the movie, matching the words to the visuals, which had already been filmed. Now, a montage of flashbacks are presented, and they're showing the couple in like more joyous times, intercut with Bacon's character waiting for news of his wife and their baby's condition. The song's lyrics are so universal, yet they're remarkably personal for anyone who's gone through the experience of childbirth together. And Kate Bush relates both of the spouse's perspectives. It's just beautiful. Number five, from 1981, Sat in Your Lap, the lead single from Kate's album, The Dreaming. It's a song about existential frustration and the constant quest for knowledge that was a number 11 hit in the UK in 1981. Written and produced by Kate Bush, Sat in Your Lap is full of Sensory stimulation starting with the gruffness of Kate's shrieking vocals in the chorus that makes the listener feel the frustration that Kate wrote about. And then there is the powerful instrumentation directed by Kate's experimental production. Sad in Your Lab kicks off with the pounding beats of drummer Preston Heyman. 
who was a member of the Tom Robinson Band and a highly respected musician that worked with Paul McCartney, Tina Turner, The Pretenders, and Simply Red, among others. Heyman, along with Patti Bush, also incorporated percussion that sounded like a bullwhip swishing through the air. That effect came from Heyman and Bush actually playing on bamboo canes to capture the sound Kate imagined for the song. Number four, The Man with the Child in His Eyes. Ah, just a riveting ballad that Kate composed when she was only 13 years old. And she recorded it when she was 16 with guidance in the recording studio by Pink Floyd's David Gilmore, who co-produced the track with Andrew Powell. David also paid for the studio expenses to record the song because he wanted to help Kate launch her career as a professional artist. Now, although she was only a teenager, Gilmore saw something in Kate that he believed was very, very special. Kate wrote the man with the child in his eyes about a young woman being attracted to an older man. It's really just a little boy inside a grown man's body. Now, Kate Bush elaborated that it was a trait that she found in many men that she had known throughout her life, and she marveled about how wonderful it was that those men could retain the magic of childhood. The Man with the Child in His Eyes was a departure from the theatrical and progressive music style that Kate Bush fans were more accustomed to, but it was still very well received, especially in the UK where it rose to number six and in Ireland it climbed to number three. Kate sings The Man with the Child in His Eyes with an endearing gentleness and a childlike innocence that is perfect for the subject matter. It's a beautiful demonstration of the purity and versatility of her enormous vocal talent. Number three, Cloud Busting. The second single released from one of the most complete albums recorded in the 80s, Kate's 1985 triumph, Hounds of Love. Cloud Busting shows off yet another dimension of her enchanting flair, Kate Bush as a storyteller. Cloud Busting is a musical yarn about a father and son spending time with a rain-making process called Cloud Busting on their family farm called Organon. Kate wrote the song from the son's perspective, and she gives us a heartwarming vocal performance painting vivid nostalgia and poignancy, especially the part of the song when the son discovers that his father is not the infallible hero that he had worshipped, but in fact, very human. It's the second pre-chorus that really gets me every time. I hid my yo-yo in the garden. I can't hide you from the government. Then to the ending when she says, but every time it rains, you're here in my head like the sun coming out. Very touching. Cloud Busting was a mild hit. It peaked at number 20 in the UK, but was a model of Kate Bush's fantastic, just fascinating artistic eccentricity. Number two, Wuthering Heights, new vocal version. The song that launched the career of Kate Bush in 1978 at the ripe old age of 19. Wuthering Heights is a musical inspiration of the classic novel of the same name that Kate wrote one night under the light of a full moon. It was an inspiration that she acted upon just before recording her debut album. Like Emily Bronte's classic book, Wuthering Heights is a story about the love affair between the two lead characters, Catherine and Heathcliff. Surprisingly, at the time of writing the song, Kate had not entirely read Wuthering Heights. But the more that she leafed through a copy of the book that she borrowed from her brother, the more her creative juices just started to flow. Wuthering Heights ascended all the way to number one in the UK for young Kate Bush. And when it hit number one, it made Kate Bush the first female solo artist to top the charts in the UK with a self-composed song. Wuthering Heights was also a number one smash in Ireland, New Zealand, and Australia, and it broke into the top 10 throughout Europe. Incidentally, Kate Bush was also the first British solo female artist to top the UK album charts, and the first female artist to enter the album chart at number one. An historic achievement that she obtained with the release of her third album, Never Forever, in 1980. 
It's hard to put Kate's vocal performance on Wuthering Heights into words because when you listen to it, when you listen to her sing this song, it just leaves you speechless. Kate more than honors the legacy of Bronte's novel, creating a soaring, dramatic rock opera. I mean, Kate played the piano parts in the song and the guitar solo at the end was performed by Ian Berenson, formerly of Pilot. Remember that irresistible pop song, Magic from 74? I played this song for my little boys recently and they were strangely amazed to say the least. It was like a zap to their auto-tuned modern pop trained ears. But the next day they both said, Hey, Dad, can we hear that weird song again? It was really cool. And number one, running up that hill, a deal with God. For me, this is Kate Bush's opus. Running up that hill manifests every facet of her genius as a vocalist, a lyricist, a producer, and a visionary. The original title was just A Deal With God, but EMI, Kate's record label, was afraid of having God in the title, so the compromise was to make A Deal With God in the parentheses. It was the lead single from the epic Hounds of Love album, but Kate had to tussle with the label yet again because EMI wanted the first single to be cloud busting. After Kate's concession on the song title, the label caved to her wishes for this to be the first single. Running up that hill, a deal with God was insightfully written about the inherent differences between men and women. The Venus and Mars syndrome, so to speak. Since men and women often collide on many aspects of a relationship, Kate had the idea of asking God to allow men and women to change places for a time to have a better understanding of what the other person is going through. The deal could essentially reduce discord between the sexes and harmonize their love for each other. Kate Bush cleverly uses running up that hill as a metaphor on the struggles of a relationship. Gosh, it's just brilliant. Kate unleashes a painfully sensual vocal on the song's final chorus. And if I only could, I'd make a deal with God and get him to swap our places. Be running up that road, be running up that hill with no problems. In addition to penning the song, Kate performed all the vocals on Running Up That Hill. She also produced the track and played the Fairlight CMI synthesizers. Running Up That Hill was Kate's biggest hit in America, climbed to number 30 on the Billboard Hot 100, number 34 on the Billboard Top Rock Tracks chart, and received heavy modern rock radio play in the United States. Which is sad, it should have been a number one, but Running Up That Hill was massive in the UK, rise to number three and was a top 10 single in France, Germany, Ireland, Switzerland, Belgium, Australia, and the Netherlands. <sighs> American alternative artist Meg Myers released a cover of the song in early 2019 and it reached number one on both the Billboard Rock Airplay chart and the Alternative Songs chart in January 2020. It's a great tip of the hat to Kate Bush. Now, like I've said, as popular as Kate Bush is in the UK and throughout Europe, she has not received the recognition that she sorely deserves here in America. Some of us are fortunate to have discovered her a long time ago and have immersed ourselves in her amazing catalog of music. All of us at Professor of Rock strongly encourage you to go listen to the links below, our curated playlist of all of her amazing songs, Listen to them, enjoy the incredible Kate Bush, one of the true geniuses of the rock era. If she hasn't done so already, your world is about to get rocked. Also, pick up her classic albums on vinyl. We have a link for that and a link to get one of these amazing shirts to celebrate her incredible artistry. Leave us a comment about Kate Bush. What is your fiber? If you like our content, subscribe. Also, hit us up on Patreon. Help us keep the music alive. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Mm -hmm.